Thank you all for coming here today. Um, I'll just start with a brief question. How many of you uh, are at the School of Public Health? Okay, a decent number. Um, so you obviously have an interest in healthcare. Um, I guess the reason I have a vested interest is from a personal experience. Um, during my last uh, year at the University of Connecticut, I was a victim of a home invasion. Um, and it was a violent one. They used a gun and tied up my hands and legs using cable wire. Uh, and I needed two years of physical therapy to uh, get through the process uh, to get my range of motion back. And um, during that time frame, I experienced you know real time the healthcare, the inefficiencies in the healthcare system, the fragmentation, going to different urgent cares and going to different uh, hospitals. Uh, and they'd never have my medical documentation. They would not have my information on file and I'd have to get different blood work done even though I've already done it. And that's, that to me is healthcare fragmentation. That is why I co-founded my own startup um, and uh, focused on these inefficiencies and how we can alleviate those concerns for individuals. And so today we're gonna to talk a little bit about health IT in, in general. Uh, we're gonna talk about uh, interoperability how we can move towards interoperability, uh, the, uh, the power of big data, and I guess the misconceptions associated there, and just take things uh, bit by bit. So fragmentation in healthcare really has two meanings, right? So there's a structural component, and then there's also the uh, patient engagement aspect of it, the more humanistic approach. So when you look at the structural component, you have EMRs and EHRs, there are over 500 plus vendors, um, across the country that are catering for different practitioners and hospital systems. And a lot of them uh, are fragmented for the sole purpose that they don't integrate. So if you have Dr. X uh, taking care of your dental work and then Dr. Y's or PCP, um, they don't intertwine and that's an issue. But there's also a concern in terms of um, a lack of relationships. Healing requires relationships. And that's one thing that's lacking. You know, we focus so much on health care as opposed to health or better health in general. The application of health care itself should promote better health and wellness for individuals. And that's of concern to individuals uh, and to the broader public. Getting stakeholders involved uh, is of true value, uh, you know, not only to us as individuals, but to the general economy. The cost of, medic uh, the cost of medical treatment is where it is today because uh, of inefficiencies and because of fragmentation. So enough about that. Um, just looking at you know, the EHR vendor uh, market share, you'll, you'll see how dispersed it is. Um, Epic, Cerner, McKesson, Allscripts, you know, they have their own warehouse, their own database structure for how they uh, store information. So it's very difficult for it to go to other locations, to go to other EMRs, EHRs. Same concern here, so EMRs. And it, how many of you know what the difference is between e, an EMR and an EHR? OK, so an EMR uh, does not allow you to share data beyond uh, your current system. An EHR, however, will allow you to do that. And it's the same concern here. And that leads to the question of you know, interoperability. How do we get to that point? Is it feasible? Is it something that we can even do? Um, and that's something we'll discuss. Now, there are some certain individuals who say that it's not feasible at all. If you look at the, the landscape itself uh, with EMRs and EHRs, it's a very vast one. Uh, but certain things that we can do involve um, you know, promoting a single sign-on feature, you know, the ability to have an industry-neutral authentication platform. So when you think of Blackboard, which is a great example, everyone here, I'm sure, uses Blackboard at Yale University. Uh, so when you sign on, you can see your financial aid information. You can see your lunch menus. Um, you can pay for books for your courses, et cetera. You know, that single sign-on allows you to see all these other pieces. It's a consolidation. Um, 
we need something like that, but applied to EMRs and EHRs. So it's a single sign-on component there. Um, the other focus that we have is we're always focused on, and we emphasize this a lot, pushing versus pulling data, right? So we just emphasized that each EMR, EHR has a different structure in terms of how they warehouse their information. Um, we, need, we need to look at that a little more uh, concisely and concretely. You know, whether that involves some sort of regulatory policy to incentivize uh, these stakeholders to get on board, that's, that's a question I'm sure you guys have uh, you know, your own thoughts on that. And then same thing from enterprise applications, you know, building on top of that. A lot of folks have this misconception that, oh, open source is not going to be as secure um, but that's not the reality. There are actually examples where open source uh, platforms are actually more effective. And when you look at other industries, they actually save a ton of money, whether it's financial. Um, and some of you actually can use open source platforms all the time. If you code with PHP, uh, if you use a library um, 